Hello, uh, my name is Jan Rosker. I'm a professor of phrenology at the um, uh, University of Ljubljana. And I will, um, in this presentation, uh, which was supposed to take place in a physical form, but now, um, regretfully, I was not able to attend the conference in Reykjavik. So the presentation will be, uh, the lecture will be given um, via Zoom. Um, but anyway, the conference is on aging, and um, in this framework, I will try to illuminate the correlative and complement complementary relation between the categories of Dao and Qi in the Yijing. Um, this relation uh, is, of course, not only important uh, for um, severe misinterpretations of the term met metaphysics in the Sinophone world, uh, there have been many debates um, about it because Xing Er Shang Xue derives from uh, Xing Er Shang Xue Wei Zhu Dao um, derives from Yi Jing and um, and the expression Xing Er Shang Xue uh, is also um, is also uh, in the modern Chinese used as a translation for the for the their metaphysics. Uh, so, and this uh, translation is seen by many scholars as a problematic one, but I will not go into this aspect uh, of this uh, quotation now because the um, passage which uh, tells us Xing Er Shang Zhe Wei Zhe Dao, Xing Er Xia Zhe Wei Zhe Qi is also important from another um, point of view, which is not so well known, but it is very topical. So I will talk about the implications for the from the relations of Dao and Qi uh, for the contemporary interpretations of the uh, philosophical paradigms of technology. Uh, in the Chinese culture. So this uh, presentation will be about the philosophy of technology in the Chinese context. So I will uh, proceed from the questions concerning the so-called cosmotechnology in the Chinese context. And in this context, I will critically present a theory of the Hong Kong scholar Yu Kui, uh, who has been living and working in Germany uh, for the last, last decade, and whose books a book on Chinese cosmotechnics has been immensely influential in the academic circles of Western scholars working on philosophy of technology. And I will try to go into some, um, some interpretations uh, of the relation between Tao and Qi, which seem to me um, problematic. And because this book is very famous in the Western um, academic uh, sphere, uh, it is um, it is even more important to um, analyze uh, its uh, possible insufficiencies from a sinological point of uh, view. So, um, Yu Kui's interpretation of the specific Chinese cosmotechnology also proceeds from the Yi Jing. So uh, given that the Yi Jing represents one of the most important and paradigmatic classical works of Chinese philosophy and culture, it is by no means coincidental that it also laid the foundations for the specifically Chinese cosmotechnology. Therefore, in clarifying the question about the constitution and the function of traditional Chinese attitude um, to technology, uh, which also has important implications for Chinese ecology. Uh, we shall start from clarifying its inherent connection with the so-called cosmotechnology. So, but what is cosmotechnology? I assume that not uh, all of you are familiar with this term. So, um, cosmotechnology is a term uh, that ref refers to the various different relationships between human beings and technology as developed in different cultures and their corresponding symbolic, economic, uh, and linguistic worlds. In other words, 
It is a part, it is a part of cosmologies associated with the specific attitudes of individuals and communities towards various specific techniques that are vital to their survival and toward technology as a coherent, rationally ordered system of those of, of those techniques that are vital for um, human survival. Uh, in this sense, cosmotechnology is a system based on the combination of the cosmic and the moral, aesthetic, or axiological orders uh, in the acts of practicing and passing on uh, such techniques. In the history of humankind, many different systems of understanding or explaining the cosmos have evolved, uh, as have many different techniques, of course. Therefore, there cannot be only one cosmo cosmotechnology, as for instance, the European one, because uh, contemporary philosophy of uh, technology is also focused upon uh, the paradigms, the co cosmotechnological paradigms uh, as have been evolved in the uh, history of uh, Western or the European uh, thought, uh, starting from um, ancient Greek. And they give the impression that the only cosmotechnology that uh, has been relevant for today's um, world uh, is the European one. But in fact, there exist many individual, particular cosmotechnologies, as many as there are uh, symbolic orders um, of perceiving and understanding uh, the cosmos. So this culturally conditioned condition miscellany of different techniques and cosmo um, technologies is called techno-diversity. It consists of order. It consists of orders that are culturally and linguistically conditioned, while the process of applying techniques and designing their products is, as such, uh, of course, um, universal. So, uh, Yukhui, um, who will be in the center of this presentation uh, today is a um, scholar of uh, informatics and philosophy from Hong Kong. In fact, he studied first uh, computer science, uh, informatics in Hong Kong. And then uh, at the graduate, postgraduate level, he also studied Western philosophy uh, in uh, France and Germany, I think. Um, and so he is a Western trained philosopher, but has some knowledge of uh, Chinese philosophy from his cultural background, so to speak. And he believed that understanding different uh, culturally conditioned form, forms of cosmotechnology, or as he himself uh, calls them, cosmotechnics, uh, is important because it can uh, prevent uh, universalistic equalization of ideas. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so to speak, um, this is this is, of course, important because um, it tells us a lot about the role and manner of interaction between humans and technology in general, of course. So, in other words, techno-diversity uh, is a term which is based upon different patterns, uh, different paradigms of cosmo-technology. Uh, which is always based um, on the relationship between humans and technology. So in this context, uh, techno-diversity uh, emphasizes uh, cultural diversity. It is an understanding based on uh, technological diversity uh, that allows for a multi-layered uh, and pluralistic starting point for the study of such relationships. On such foundations, we have produced throughout history um, many, um, a number of different forms um, of knowledge linked to the world and the earth in different ways and through diverse, specific, multifaceted relationships that cannot be measured solely um, by the criteria of linear progress 
uh, of modern science and uh, technology. Only an understanding of the existence of such heterogeneity as opposed to the isolated contribution of individual nations and cultures will allow us to resolve the tension between increasingly isolated uh, social groups. And this is what, uh, of course, Yuk Hui uh, emphasizes all the time, which is right, of course. But what are the defining characteristic features of the specifically Chinese uh, cosmo technology? We can ask in this um, regard. How does it contribute to the global techno diversity? Uh, within the framework of such questions, uh, Yu Kui then um, has set himself the task of systematically um, examining the ancient concepts of Dao, which is uh, used as in the sense of a way, the method, the original principle. Uh, in the Yijing, and qi, uh, which can be translated uh, as a vessel, accessory, tool, device. Um, because he believes, Yukui believes, that uh, the relation between them is of paradigmatic nature for the characteristic features of the specifically Chinese Cosmo technology. So this term, uh, this pair of terms appears for the first time in uh, the history of written Chinese together uh, in the ancient Book of Changes, Zhou Yi, uh, which is in the forefront of today's conference. And in the Yijing, it is described uh, in this famous um, passage, which tells us, Xing er shang zhi wei zhi dao, Xing er xia zhi wei zhi qi. And uh, this can be translated, what is above the form, we call method or Dao, what is below them, we call uh, tool or qi. So um, for many, not only for Yu Kui, for many uh, contemporary Chinese scholars, uh, other contemporary Chinese scholars who are also uh, interested in, um, in um, uh, philosophy of technology, Yi Jing includes in this aspect the basis of Chinese cosmotechnology. So uh, Yu Kui has elaborated on this question in two of his most well-known works in the field of Chinese uh, thought. And um, this is a book uh, we, which uh, I have mentioned before and which is very uh, influential in the European, at least, um, uh, philosophy of technology. Uh, and it is uh, it was published in English under the title uh, "The Questions uh, Concerning Technology in China: An Essay in uh, Cosmotechnics." So the second uh, publication in which uh, Yukui deals um, with this question in great detail is uh, an article which has been published in Chinese, and Yukui summarizes uh, in it and explains the core of the relation between Dao and Qi, starting from its first mention uh, in the um, Yijing, um, and tracing its evolution and transformation uh, in the further development of Chinese philosophy. So this um, paper has been published under the title uh, Qi Yu Dao, Chao, which can be translated as um, Qi and Dao, a response to a transhumanist uh, future. Okay, so um, now let's uh, describe um, a little bit more in detail uh, his interpretation of this relation. He sees is as also. Um, so he sees this relation between Tao and Qi as a dualism, albeit a dualism uh, of a different kind, not a Cartesian uh, dualism, but still uh, it is a dualism in which the Tao, the concept of Tao is primary. So, but in his view, Tao is also a moral, predominantly moral category. Therefore, for Yuk, the relationship between Tao and Qi 
is primarily one uh, between um, morality and utility. And moreover, he tries to compare it with the ancient Greek distinction between techna and arete, uh, so virtue and uh, utility, uh, or uh, utilitarism, we could also say. So in the search for Chinese cosmotechnology, Hui's starting point is certainly correct and useful, but his interpretation of this pair of terms and its meaning is problematic. In what follows, I will first critically examine Yu Hui's interpretation of the relationship between Dao and Qi, uh, as it is expressed in this uh, quotation, Xinger Shang Jiaojie Dao, Xinger Xia Jiaojie Qi. Uh, I will question his thesis through the lens of three central questions, namely. Uh, I start from a distinction between dualism and binary categories. I will continue with the second question about the moral content allegedly implied in this quotation, uh, in, the, in Yuku's interpretation of Tao, and end with a critical elaboration on Yuku's comparison of Tao and Qi with the ancient Greek terms techne and arete. After this critical confrontation with Yukhui, um, I will take a preliminary look um, at the question of why and how the specific Chinese cosmotechnology, which manifests itself in this quotation, is closely related to the question of specifically Chinese ecology. So let's um, take a look to the first question. So, um, as already mentioned, Yu Kui sees the relationship between Tao and Qi as a dualism, albeit not a Cartesian dualism, uh, whatever this might be. But uh, what is important in this dualism for Yu Kui, Tao is absolutely primary, um, the primary category and the most important, uh, the crucial category. So my question uh, in this regard, my first question um, is the following. Is the relation between Tao and Qi in the Yijing just a different, namely a non-Cartesian uh, kind of uh, dualism? So, Yukhui clearly sees that the relationship between Tao and Qi cannot be seen as a classical Cartesian dualism. However, for him, it is still a dualism, albeit uh, one of a different kind. While Cartesian dualism uh, generally refers to two opposing and discontinuous entities like mind and body, culture and nature, being nothing, this form of dualism uh, is not prevalent in China. Uh, and he emphasized that yin and yang is not conceived as two discontinuous entities. I, of course, agree with this interpretation, but I also think it is uns uns uh, insufficient and it fails to capture the essence of the distinction that characterizes the two forms of duality, namely dualism and binary categories. In my view, yin and yang, like Tao and Qi, cannot be counted among dualisms, even though they, of course, represent dualities. In this regard, we must distinguish between two models of dualities, at least, namely the Cartesian dualism on the one hand and the model of what I call binary categories or in Chinese, du fan chou, on the other hand. The most important and crucial difference between the two models is twofold. The first has been rightly pointed out by Yu Kui and is related to the continuous and discontinuous nature respectively, of the two opposites that constitute these um, two models of duality. The discontinuous nature um, of the concepts that form the opposites in the Cartesian model is, of course, related to the static paradigms of Hegelian dialectics, while the continuous nature of the binary categories is related to the processual nature. Uh, of Chinese philosophy and the Yijing as 
its most important starting point. So the second distinction, however, is at least as important, uh, but was completely overlooked by Yukhui. It concerns the fact that the Cartesian model or the model of dualism is based on three elementary laws of uh, formal logic that led to that leads to the mutual exclusion uh, of the two opposing concepts and to a synthesis that is qualitatively a new um, that is a qualitatively new static phase rooted in the unity of contradictions. The processual and correlative character of the model of binary categories. Um, of which Dao and Qi uh, are also part, uh, or they belong to the, such uh, binary categories. So the processual, the processual and correlative character is based on the mutual complementarity of the two oppositional categories. In this model, the two opposites do not exclude each other, <clears throat> but complement each other in a continuous process of mutual interaction in which neither of the two opposites can occupy a primary or independent position because they are as such um, interdependent. So let's proceed now from this uh, groundwork to my second question. Uh, and uh, this qu second question refers to Yukui's um, uh, <laughs> opinion that uh, Dao is a, a predominantly moral category. So uh, for him, proceeding from this um, basic uh, hypothesis, the relationship between Dao and Qi is, of course, primarily one of morality and utility. And I question this with, with the second question, asks, uh, which asks, whether this relation is really a relation between morality and utilitarianism. And my answer, again, is no. Um, because uh, Yukui, in viewing Dao as a primary moral category, was following Mao Zong San, who has seen the entire Chinese philosophy as a, a kind of uh, moral metaphysics. But this is only one, uh, of course, interpretation of the basic uh, features uh, that define Chinese philosophy. There are many scholars who oppose this opinion. And uh, I also um, question this, uh, this basic hypothesis because I think that these moral connotations were um, brought into the interpretation of Dao in later Confucian commentaries, not that they, they were not part of the original Yijing, but were brought into it uh, um, in the Han Dynasty and even more at the second uh, reform of Confucianism during the Song and Ming Neo Confucianism. This moral metaphysical view um, was brought into the Chinese. Uh, philosophy much later. And in the Yi Jing, um, in my point, I don't see um, many moral connotations of Tao uh, as it appears in, um, in the Yi Jing. So uh, let us look at some examples from the Yi Jing. Um, of course, we cannot go very deep into this analysis because Tao appears uh, in Yi Jing for over hundred times. So I will limit these examples to the first and last hexagram, uh, Qian and Kun, um, whereby the, the first one, the Qian, is the hexagram of the pure Yang, and the last one is the hexagram of the pure Yin. So let's, uh, let's take a look uh, in, the, um, in the commentaries, in the explanation of the Qian uh, hexagram, Dao uh, appears three times, um, so it says the principle or method of Qian is to change and transform so that everything um, that uh, obtains its appropriate nature in accordance with the mandate of life. Yeah, so we can see that in this example, Qian Dao Bianhua Ge Zheng Xingming, here it, Dao is used 
in a sense of a um, central or basic principle of um, the cosmo cosmogony. Uh, and then uh, the second, uh, the second um, example in which Dao appears uh, is in the sentence "Zhong Ri Qian Qian Fan Fu Dao Ye," active and vigilant uh, all the day, guided by this original principle or method over and over again. Uh, again, it is uh, Dao is here seen only as a method or a principle. And the same applies for the third um, uh, example, which says in the um, uh, translation that something is leaping up while still being in the deep. A profound transformation is taking place in the method indicating, indicated by this diagram, by this Qian diagram. So. <clears throat> Uh, as we could see in these three examples where Dao appears in the um, in the interpretation of the first hexagram is uh, Qian hexagram is um, used only as a um, as a method or principle without any clear moral uh, connotations. But let's um, take a look to the last hexagram Kun um, because. Um, in this, uh, in the explanation of Kun, Dao becomes the principle of method which guides the elements connected to Yin, which are following the guidance of Yang, of course. The hexagram is described in the following way. Um, Kun Dao Qi Shun Hu, Peng Tian Er Shi Xing. The principle or method of Kun is to follow. It receives influences from heaven and acts according to different situations. So in the Confucian commentaries, this principle is then applied to social norms, which is especially important for our basic question, namely the question of whether there are moral connotations or ethical connotations in the, um, in the category of Tao. And uh, this uh, interesting, um, most interesting uh, quotation goes, uh, the sentence goes like that. Yin sui yao mei, han zhi yi zong wang shi, bo gan cheng ye, di dao ye, qi dao ye, han dao ye, di dao, wu cheng, er dai, you zong ye. And I have translated this. Um, I have translated this um, um, sentence as: Although Yin has excellent qualities, their implementation in rulership cannot complete it. This is the principle or method of the art, earth, the wife, and the minister. The method or principle of earth is without completion, but can only be accomplished through transformation via successive replacement. So although we speak here, Yi Jing speaks here about the way of the earth and of the wife and of the uh, minister or subordinate, uh, these ways of behavior are not being ruled exclusively by the Tao of Yin, because uh, they can only be accomplished in a correlative and compl mutual complementary relation with the uh, young. And this is uh, a very important um, uh, difference um, to the uh, European, to the European uh, uh, concept uh, expressing the virtue, the moral virtue, because what we have seen from all these fragments is that the Tao can hardly be compared with morality as it is commonly understood. Although the cosmic principles can be projected to society in the sense that one has to act in accordance with the principles guiding the paradigm that defines one's own social role, they can only function in reciprocal relations with their respective other. 
This is not about morality in the sense of a free will of an autonomous subject, uh, nor a morality implemented by a moral subject of virtue ethics. So in my view, this means um, that any activity can only be complemented through mutual complementarity between both principles, that of Qian with that of Kun, or that of uh, Yang with that of Yin, and uh, so on. So, uh, and on this uh, basis, we can proceed to my third question, which is my last question regarding Yuko's interpretation, uh, because he sees uh, Dao primarily as a, a moral category, he tries to compare it with the ancient Greek distinction between Techna and Arete. And my question um, is related uh, to, um, to uh, critique of uh, the suitability of this um, comparison. So I ask if the comparison between Tao and Chi on the one hand and uh, Techne, ancient Greek uh, terms techne and arete is uh, really suitable or possible even? Or is it a comparison? It, is it like comparing uh, apples and peaches? Uh, so as we have seen in the previous discussion, Dao is quite different from arete. For it is not a moral category. The term chi, on the other hand, is quite comparable uh, to the ancient Greek notion of techne. For it includes both connotations, uh, namely the connotation of a skill as well as the connotation of the utilitarianism that can lead to pure instrumental rationality if it is not controlled by moral or rational principles. This has far-reaching consequences for understanding the specifically Chinese um, uh, relationship between technology and nature and thus for the Chinese system of cosmotechnology and science itself. The comparison between the terms Tao and Qi um, in the ancient Greek uh, and the ancient Greek terms techne and arete is particularly problematic. First of all, Tao cannot be reduced to moral connotations, as we have seen. Um, in the previous uh, slide, uh, Dao is rather implying an, an all-pervasive cosmic order and simultaneously a method through which every phenomenon can be bro brought into coherence uh, with this natural cosmic order. Secondly, while Dao is said to be superior and is a primarily factor compared to Qi, the ancient Greek worldview is said to be more instrumental and at least from Aristotle onwards to place more emphasis on the importance of the means to achieve goals. Um, the latter claim uh, referring to ancient Greek philosophy is undoubtedly correct and in what it describes, we can observe the essence of what later in the last two centuries of the previous millennium shows itself to be the basis for Western type modernization, namely instrumental reason. So, but while both techne and chi can evolve toward pure utility when not guided by controlling forces, arete is very different from that. Arete is a moral virtue which influences the tool from outside and also limits it. Uh, but the Tao is a principle which works in a complementary relation with the Qi from the very beginning. So this is my um, answer to the third question um, regarding Yukhu's um, interpretation of uh, the, of Dao and Qi. And um, as we have seen, well, Arete is relying on morality. And while it is the external moral subject, the bearer of virtue uh, that controls the faceless and heartless 
technology or techne. In the Chinese case, on the other hand, the utilitarian element contained in qi must be guided by the creative principle dao, which is inherent in the very method of its creation, which always aims to establish the harmonious flow and balance between nature and culture, human being and technology. So um, in this sense, uh, technology is uh, being produced already, created through this complementary relation. So Tao is not a principle which could be put on um, put on the or controlling uh, the utility from outside, but uh, it is a principle that is uh, somehow inherently inherently included uh, into the production of technology. And in this sense, uh, this ancient Chinese uh, view of uh, cosmotechnics, cosmotechnology, can, uh, if nothing else, tell us that the principle of a harmonious equilibrium or balance is must be um, must be present in the production of technology already so if we now um, think about the ecological problems uh, which with, with with which we are uh, confronted in the present uh, world we can see that uh, it is guided um, by or by um, metaphysics, which is suitable to a um, political and economic system that is based on the surplus value, which has, of course, not uh, much to do with um, uh, harmonious balance between human beings and nature. Uh, so with this uh, thought, I would like to conclude my presentation and I would like to uh, thank you again for your patient uh, listening. So thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>